morning. I'm going to take this mask off because I'm outside and there's no one around except my daughter who is helping me film this today. Some of you might not know me. I am Veronica Brannon. I am the naturalist for Children's Meeting House Montessori School. So it's my job to teach about nature, study nature, and help take care of nature. Today, we are in the butterfly garden, and I want to talk to you a little bit about why this garden is so special. And first of all, we're going to look at a little sign right here. We are part of a program to the Cincinnati Zoo where we are an official plant for pollinator garden here, and I want to explain to you what is so important about pollinators. So come over to my bench here. I have a bunch of things that I brought to show you. I want to show you all the things that must have pollinators in order to grow. So, a pumpkin. Now, this is a white pumpkin, but pumpkins have to have pollinators or they won't make seeds. Cotton. Here's part of a cotton plant. Must have pollinators or we won't have cotton. This sheet is made out of cotton. My shirt is made out of cotton. Let's see, what else do we need cotton for? Oh my goodness, avocados must have pollinators or they won't grow. They won't make seeds. Sunflower seeds must have pollinators or they won't grow. Almonds, raisins, tomatoes, apples, and all fruit, fruit trees, peaches, bananas, all of them need pollinators in order to make seeds and grow. Oh, here's some grapes. Now these are those funky long grapes. They're kind of cool. But they have to have pollinators or we won't have grapes. Oh, tea. Without pollinators, we wouldn't have tea. Sugar. Without pollinators, we wouldn't have sugar cane. Let's see. Oh, guess what? Coffee. Without pollinators, we wouldn't have coffee. Chocolate! Oh my goodness, chocolate! Without pollinators, we wouldn't have chocolate. These are just some of the things that we have to have pollinators for. Oh, and you know what? I have a little milk jug, milk container. Now, let's see, milk comes from a cow. Cows don't really need pollinators, but the food they eat has to have pollinators. So think about it, they eat grasses and grains, and if we didn't have pollinators, they wouldn't have food. So that means we would not have beef, hamburgers, milk, yogurt, cheese. So we need all the, we need pollinators for all those things. Like I said, this is just some of the things that we need pollinators for. And I actually want to kind of demonstrate how much of the food in our world is dependent on pollinators in order to grow. So if this represents all the food on our planet, if we take away about a third of this piece of paper, this is all the food that must have pollinators in order to grow. So a third of the food that we eat is dependent on pollinators. So that's just food and things like clothing yummy sugar, coffee, tea, all these wonderful things. So, actually, in our pollinator garden, we have planted things that will attract, feed, provide shelter and space for pollinators. And in fact, three quarters of all the flowering plants on our planet Earth must have pollinators. So, if we take off a quarter of this, and this is all the flowering plants on our planet Earth. These are the plants that all need pollinators. Only one quarter, 25%, doesn't need pollinators. It's pollinated by wind and not insects, bats, moths, hummingbirds, wasps, bees. So, pretty important stuff. Pollinators are very important. So I just kind of went through a little list of what needs pollination. Talked a little bit about our pollinator garden, and I ran off a little list of pollinators. 
um, bees are one of the biggest pollinators in our in, in Ohio where we live. Um, and I know a lot of people are afraid of bees. Bees can sting and it cannot feel good. Um, but nonetheless, we need bees. Without bees, we wouldn't have a lot of these foods. So what do you do when a bee is near you? Well, this is what I teach children. If we see a bee, we know that their job, what they really want to do is get to the flowers. They want to get nectar, take it back to their hive, make honey, or eat it. But as they do that, they are mixing up the pollen between the flowers, comes up. When a bee lands on a flower, it's actually getting the nectar, the little bit of sweet, juicy stuff. That's its reward that the plant gives it for it visiting the flower and going from flower to flower and distributing the pollen, right? So if a bee comes near you, you're enjoying the butterfly garden or you're enjoying the outdoors and a bee or a wasp or any stinging creature comes near you, just be still and be very quiet. That bee will soon realize that you're not a flower, that you have no nectar and they'll move on because they're busy. They want to get their work done. So that bee might even land on you. And if it does, be very still, be very calm, be very quiet. It won't take long for that bee to know that you are not a flower. All right, so my friends, your teachers are gonna share with you some great resources. I have some, um, a, a pollinator book for everyone. I have a, a wonderful article about covering some of the things we talked about and a list of all some of the foods that you might enjoy that are dependent on pollinators. Feel free to come to our wonderful CMH Pollinator Garden, maybe after school or on a weekend. You are welcome to come enjoy our garden. Be aware that there might be bees and wasps and other pollinators um, that are busy doing their work. They don't want to hurt you, but if they get frightened, they will. If you should have any questions, feel free to email me or send me a line and I will do my best to answer any questions you might have about pollinators and their importance. Have a great day, CMHers. We'll see you.